Hey everybody, I haven't prayed that you're doing well today, so we come to our word from the word. And today that word is remainder. Remainder. Now we'll get to what that means here in just a moment, as this week we will be, if you're watching daily, today's Monday, as we're starting, uh, continuing in, in the Psalms, and this week uh, starting a look through Psalm 76 through Psalm 80, a uh, different one each day. And as always, I encourage you to read the whole Psalm so you can see what's going on. Most of these are short. Um, one of them is a little bit longer than the rest of them, but these are all still ones you can read. Uh, you could read all five of them each and every day this week, and I think it'd be a good encouragement to you. These are all uh, Psalms of Asaph, and you're going to see a lot of looking back in history, looking back at what's gone on before. And I think a lot of our Christian walk today has to be um, at least looking back some of the times. Now, the reason I say some of the times, use the example before, you know, the windshield on your car is a lot bigger than the rearview mirror. Now, that rearview mirror is important. And even, you know, your side mirrors, the way that you can see things that are going on behind you and things that you've already passed by. Um, I know sometimes it seems like we're looking to see if that past is catching up with us. You know, like some flashing lights of a police car or an ambulance or something that's coming, uh, coming back to catch up with us. But really, when we use that analogy, thinking about, look, you need to remember what's behind you. But as Paul says, we need to press forward. For the prize that's before us. And that's why our windshield is so much bigger than our rearview mirror. But today, he, he's even talking about in Psalm 76, you'll, you'll see a lot of what's going on here. Uh, he's talking about, uh, I love the heading in my Bible, says the majesty of God in judgment. And so even in the way that God judges, he is still worthy of praise. And even the judgment, once it's poured out, is even in itself. Once God's will is accomplished, it still continues to praise him. So when we read verse 10 of Psalm 76 today, it may sound strange at first, but then we'll dive into it. So Psalm 76 verse 10 says, surely the wrath of man shall praise you with the remainder of wrath, you shall gird yourself. You know, now to think about God clothing himself with wrath that was poured out it, may not make sense to us. And, and you can look at some different translations of this verse and you'll see it laid out a different way. But in, in essence, either way you look at it, it's still true that the wrath as it's poured out is praise to God. But then as people try to pour out wrath on one another, God's will is still going to be done and still be accomplished. And I think really today, I think that's what maybe we should focus on. The fact that even like we had just been looking at uh, yesterday and in and, and our current Sunday series, looking at the way that Joseph and everything that he had to go through in the Old Testament, the way that his brothers had schemed against him, right? It seemed as though their wrath against him was being poured out. But even in that, praise was being given to God because, great, uh, because God was working through those circumstances. His, his providence and his sovereignty over the circumstances were calling out praise to God. And I think it's one of those that, I, in my sanctified imagination, as I like to say a lot of times, you look at the remainder of wrath, right? So even what was left, the, the, the bitterness that they even had, even that is kind of what God could clothe himself with. And if you think about it, it's because every time that they thought that they had accomplished defeating God's plan, it still was praising him that much more because God's plan was still going on. His plan was still being set in motion, even though they thought it wasn't. They thought they had been successful in fooling everyone. Now, you see that not only there, you think about um, you think about in the book of Daniel, I mean, King Nebuchadnezzar tries to do the same things and those things are turned into praise. You see other uh, rulers of nations that try to do things and, and what ends up happening? God is glorified and magnified. Probably no better example than the fact that Jesus Christ came and as he was here on earth, remember the wrath of man that was poured out on him. It sang praises to God because it was God's plan for the wrath of God to be poured out on his own son. Why? Because the sin of the world, that sin wrath was poured out on Christ because of us. And it ceases to praise God, even to this day. It will never, it will never stop 
praising God. Maybe I didn't say that right the first time. It, it never ceases to praise God. That's, that's what I meant. It, it will never stop praising God. The spilt blood of Jesus Christ and the, uh, the empty tomb where Jesus Christ was laid dead, but arose and walked out, um, you know, under his own power. The fact that it was the power of God that raised him from the dead is the same power that can raise you and me. All of that sings praises to God. And even with the remainder of wrath, he says, even, even if there's anything left, that's what kind of clothes God. It, it continues to praise him. It adorns him. It decorates him with praise. So let me put it this way. And I'll kind of just close with this thought. If even our best, as Isaiah says, even our best is as filthy rags. Even the filthiest things that we have and do can still praise God as well. Kind of what Joseph said, even though they meant it for evil, God, you meant it for good. God can turn wrath into praise. But why waste time with the wrath? Why don't we just jump straight to praising him in the first place? God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.